Thank you for joining us today for another life-changing encounter with the Word of God. This broadcast is brought to you by Rema Chapel, a parish of the redeemed Christian Church of God. You're welcome to a center of transformation and a love-filled environment you can call home. Our vision is to build lives with the Word to impact our world. God has a word for you and especially prepared his servant to share this message with you. We hope this message blesses and equips you to triumph in life, impact your world, and fulfill purpose. Now, let's dive into the message. Hallelujah! Just go ahead and give him praise, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Lord, you are worthy. Lord, we exalt your name. We give you praise, we give you glory. Hallowed be thy name, O Lord. Thank you, Father. Be thou exalted, O God, above all heavens. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above all heavens. Bless your glory. Almighty God, we bless your name. Jehovah, we give you praise. We give you glory, we give you honor. Lord, we say be thou exalted, O Lord our God. Be magnified, our King. We say be glorified, Jehovah, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we bless your name for another new day, another new week, O God. We bless your name for the privilege to be alive. Lord, we bless your name for the freedom that is in Christ Jesus. To you be all the glory. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you because our gathering this day unto you, O God. Thank you because, Lord God, we have the assurance that as we gather, O God, you are here with us. We say, be exalted, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. Our Father and our God, we thank you for how you have moved us far in the service. Lord, we are not taking this for granted. Please accept our thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, as we go into the award this morning, please speak to us. Let the entrance of your word give us light and understanding. Every heart that will hear your word today, Lord, touch the heart, O God, so that they will respond appropriately to your word in the name of Jesus. I receive unction to speak your word this day. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed in jesus name we have prayed praise the lord amen once again i want to welcome you to this service in the name of our lord jesus christ i want to bless the name of the almighty god for freedom at last hallelujah amen we thank God because the restrictions, they are gradually coming to an end. And registration, there is no more registration for church. So no excuse for anybody to stay at home. The Lord God will bless you in Jesus' name. So let us come together again. Let us meet physically. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Turn your Bible with me to the book of First Chronicles chapter 5. Verse 1 to 2. Daddy Talabi, you are welcome. It's nice seeing you again. The Lord God will give you double in Jesus' name. You see, 
I saw him this morning outside again. I said, this Baba again. You won't even rest. The Lord God will give you rest in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. When I grow old, I want to be like you too. Ultimately like Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. First Chronicles 5, 1 to 2. Now, I'm reading from the Amplified Classic. We come to the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel. For Reuben was the eldest, but because he polluted his father's couch with Bilal, his father's concubine, his birthright was given to Joseph, to the sons of Joseph, favorite son of Israel. So the genealogy is not reckoned and for. Judah prevailed above his brethren, and from him came the prince, and was Joseph. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. A case study in the double blessings, a promise, right hand I have held, not be short. I pray for you to either to not and remain short. This season, the Lord God, Zechariah 9.12 says, Return to destroy a promise of God. If it's found, it shall pay double. In the name of Jesus, Amen. especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. Sister Molade, when she was leading, quoted Isaiah, and faithful to repent of his word. As he said it, will it shall go without being fulfilled. But that which he has sent them. The word of the grass will wither away. You can go to the bank with his promise. The Bible says that he magnified, he has highly exalted him and has given him a name above every other name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee should bow above his name. The Bible says that his name is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and is saved. Yet he magnifies his word. You know, there is that song that we usually sing that um, um, the, the, the name of Jesus, demons, they hear it and they tremble, they bow. But yet, he magnifies his word above his name. So, what is the lesson of this for us? He has promised us double blessing. And you will not miss it in the name of Jesus Christ. And you know one thing you need to know. I've gone away from the, the slide. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. When we talk about double blessing, as I was preparing, I was looking at it. Go and look at the promise of double blessings. And all those that God gave double Go and look at them. Double blessing is battered in the place of affliction, in the place of suffering, in the place of challenges. And as I began to think, I said, okay, no wonder my daddy, Gio, God told him that it's a year of double. Look at the pandemic and everything. As you are coming out of it, you are entering into the double blessing. Amen. Look at Job, for example. The Bible said that God gave him twice what he had lost. It was in the midst of the adversity he went through that the double came. Joseph, that we are going to be looking at today, from being the favorite to the pit to slavery, slavery to jail, and then after that, he was exalted. To the extent that it was a generational blessing, the children even got double. I pray for you this morning that in that place of adversity, in that place of pain, in that place of tears, God will give you double for your trouble in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It is a promise. 
not only it is a promise, it is also a covenant. And you know what a covenant is? It's an agreement between two people, ratified or sealed by blood. Ratified and sealed by blood. And the one that has made that covenant with us is the one that cannot fail, is the one that cannot lie. So he will stand by his word to the end. Zechariah 9:11. He says, "And for you also, for you are your delight will be also, because of the blood of your covenant, I will set your prisoners free from waterless place. Because of the blood of your covenant. So not only it is a, is it a promise. It is also a covenant. And then not also that, it is the right of the firstborn. It's the right of the firstborn. And you and I, we are the firstborn of God. You have, we are the firstborn of God. How do I know this? The Bible says that Israel is the first God, firstborn of God. Then you shall say unto Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, Israel is my first son, my firstborn. The Bible tells us that we are the Israel of God. When you go to Hebrews 12, 23, it talks about the church as the firstborn of God. So it is a right of the firstborn and by divine baths by being born again by your connection with Jesus Christ you are registered for double blessing and you will not miss it in the name of Jesus Amen. Joseph we want to look at his life we want to look at his life because we can learn a lot from him. The Bible says there that Reuben lost the birthright. It came to Joseph. Even Judah, that we all talk about, he didn't get the double portion. Joseph got it. Joseph, although he was the 11th son, he emerged as the firstborn with double portion. From among all the brethren, Joseph was a very righteous and spiritual person. Even as a child, his brothers were evil. He, you will see him, when the brothers misbehave, he will bring the report to the parents. He overcame discouragement. He had, they do, he had a bad childhood, a bad home life. He suffered rejection, cruelty of the brothers. He was exiled. He was a slave. There was loneliness, homesickness. There were sexual temptations, false accusation, imprisonment, a ruined reputation, and many other injustices. He went through all this. But at the end, see what happened to him. He had to wait. Despite the fact that there was a promise, there was a revelation, he had to wait. He battled against delays. Doubts came in, discouragement came in. But one thing you need to know about him is that every injustice he suffered became a servant to move him. Praise the Lord. As it's like there is one tree. In my place, they call it Ose. I don't know the old people here. What is Ose in English? Is it oak? It says, it says, it says every attempt to kill the Ose tree, as you try to kill it, it's just growing bigger and bigger and bigger. As the enemy was pushing him down, 
God was lifting me up. I pray for you this day <laughs> that every adversity, every attempt of the enemy to push you down, you will be like the Ose tree in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will be flourishing. Amen. You will be blossoming in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So every injustice he suffered became a servant to move him closer to the throne. Every delay, every heartache and, heart, heart ache and difficulty was building up and high on in his soul. It was building his capacity. He said, he said something. He said, praying for double portion without increase in your capacity is a waste. You are asking for a double portion and there is no increase in your capacity. When that double portion comes, you are going to waste it. So that's why you see God taking them through what they went through so that their capacity would have been enlarged and they'll be able to move into the double portion. I pray that your capacity you begin to build in Jesus' name. So as his capacity was enlarging, preparing him for the great task he will be doing. Also, he developed a great capacity to forgive his brothers. If you look at Genesis 41, 51, his first son was called Manasseh. Manasseh, God has made me to forget. And the question for you this morning is, can you forget the injustices of yesterday? Can you forget the sin, the iniquity, the transgressions, the offense of yesterday? If you are going to move to this, if you are going to enjoy the double portion, you must learn to forgive. And then let us know that the pathway to double blessing is not easy. No wonder when Elisha asked for double blessing, Elijah's response was that the request was a hard or a difficult one. Getting the double blessing is not easy. Praise the Lord. So how do I get it? From the life of Joseph, we are going to be looking at it. And every of these observation in the life of David, uh, in the life of Joseph, you will see it in the life of Job in the life of Elisha, even in the life of Jesus. You know, Jesus Christ too. His own, even, his own blessing was not even double. It was uncountable. Wherefore God has highly exalted him. But before that, look at what he suffered. The Bible said that he learned obedience through what he suffered. So have you suffered up to the place of shedding your blood? No wonder wherefore God highly exalted him. Praise the Lord. So it is not easy. But the good news is that whatever you are going through, God is using it to build your capacity. So that when the double blessing comes, it will not be a waste. And I want you to also realize and know that God does not waste pain. That pain you are going through, if you are a child of God, it doesn't waste pain. That pain is in the process of turning to gain for you in the name of Jesus Christ. So what are the things we can learn from the life of Joseph? Number one is diligence. It was hard working. You want to get double portion? You must be diligent. It means working hard and putting all your energy and attention in anything you do. This does not only enlarge you, but will make you great, famous, successful, and you become a reference point in life. It pays to be diligent. Proverbs 22:29 says, "Says, or says that a man diligent in his work." It will stand before king and not before your year people. (laughs) 
Praise the Lord. You see, many of us, we ignorantly believe that prayer and fasting exclude us from hard work. No. Jesus prayed. And he was a workaholic. He worked to the extent that he became tired and he was still preaching. And they were, when his disciples, is it, is it John 4 now? When the disciples came and said, ah, ah, this man, you said you were tired now. Ah. He said, I must still work. Oh. The work that my father has sent me, while it is day, for night cometh when no man walks. Again, at the point, he said, either too, my father walk. Me too, I must walk. Oh. So he, uh, prayer, Christianity, prayer and fasting does not exclude you from diligence. So we must be diligent. God himself walked before he rested on the seventh day. So being a Christian is not a license to slothfulness, to laziness or idleness. Redemption in Christ Jesus empowers you to be effective, efficient and hardworking. Praise the Lord. So it is not a license to laziness. The Holy Spirit enhances your capacity to achieve better results. Because you have the mind of Christ. So to build your capacity, you must be hardworking. Because if that is not in place, when double pressure comes, it will be a waste. It won't be a waste in your life in Jesus' name. And you begin to see hard work in the life of Joseph. Genesis 37, 1, as a boy. We saw him walking the sheep with his brothers. Genesis 39, 24, he walked hard in the house of Pharaoh. The Lord was with him, and the Lord made all that he did to prosper. He was so hard working that his master had to make him the head. Even when he got to the prison, Genesis 39, 23, the keeper of prison saw how hard working he was, and he promoted him. In Genesis 41, 57, all the countries came into Egypt to Joseph to buy corn. And they will be the one doing the negotiation. Everything. Very, very hard working. No wonder the Lord blessed him. So, double portion is not just by mouth. It is by hard work too. Elisha was a hard working man. He worked. Even before, 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 before his calling, the Bible said he was working with 12 oxen. And you see him also working. The Bible said he was pouring water all through the life of Elijah. Pouring water on his hand. Another thing we want to talk about Job. How can somebody amass such a wealth if he was thoughtful to believe he was hard working? Another thing we can see in the life of Joseph was his integrity. What is integrity? Integrity is the quality of being honest and fair. It is adhering to a code of moral or artistic values, not being corruptible. Interest, interest, integrity means my word and my actions line up. I don't say one thing and do another. I am who I say I am. That is integrity. I'm not an environmental person like chameleon. That is integrity. Joseph was a man of integrity and his integrity placed him among the greatest of saints that ever lived. He did what was right and good. He was trustworthy. He was incorruptible, self-disciplined, never to violate trust. That is integrity. You want double portion? All this must be in place in your life. And when you look at his life, specific instances, Genesis 37 to when his brother were misbehaving, he brought their report. 39.8 he refused and said to his master's wife, when that one wanted to lure him into adultery, he said, no. 
I won't do this. He was a man of integrity. He was faithful in Potiphar's house and in prison where he did not deserve to be. He has integrity to the point that even when the two people came to him, the butler and the baker, it was, you know, some people want to be politically correct. He told them categorically, this is what this meant, this is what this other meant. Not even try to decorate it. That's how straightforward it was. Another thing that you need is hope and a positive attitude to life. Because like we said, double portion has most of the times battered in the place of pain, in the place of hurt, in the place of adversity. And if you are not hopeful, you may chicken out and miss the double blessing. If you are not hopeful, you may be discouraged and lose the double blessing. Hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised, that what God has promised will surely come to pass. And Joseph kept hope alive despite discouragement, despite rejection, despite the cruelty of the brethren, of, of his brothers, despite all that he went through. His hope was still alive. He won't do anything to annoy God. He, has a, he had a positive attitude. As a slave, he worked hard and sought the best outcome for his master. That's a positive attitude. He wasn't going about dejected. As a prisoner, he helped where he could. Even despite what he was going through, he was, he was, he, 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 he was sensitive enough even to notice when other people's, people are in problem. That was how we came to find out about the baker and the, and the butler. He wasn't carrying the whole, though he was going through a terrible situation, lied against, reputation maligned, yet he was positive in his outlook. Many of us, one little thing will happen like this, it's like we are carrying the whole burden of the whole world. But this man was not like that. Look at the testimony, Genesis 39, 23. Said the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand. How will he not have double portion? Even as the Genesis 40 to 50, look at it. As the Lord of Egypt, he cared for all the people of Egypt and provided fairly for them. trying to rush now. And you see him, he stayed close to God and also he's ready to point people to his God. He had no preparation time with the butler and baker's dream in prison. So he was so close to God, he always said, let me go and pray or anything before. His heart was so close to God. And you see, the interesting thing is that he never complained. You know, some of us, when we are going through something like that, God, where are you? Maybe they said, if we serve you, nothing bad will happen. Some people say, if you don't give me a wife, I will, I will backslide. Though. You know, we threaten God at times. Some people say, um, idol, if you can't deliver me, 
Please leave me as you met me. But look at him. Not one foolish word from his mouth. Very positive. Look at Job too. Curse God and die. He said, no, I won't curse him. I know my Redeemer liveth. Praise the Lord. Then endurance. Endurance. That is continued commitment to God in the face of adversity and difficulty. And Joseph is an excellent example to follow when facing life's disappointment. He never felt sorry for himself. He never blamed others. Hey, it's my parents that did not send me to government college. That's why I didn't pass very well. Some people that went to Yon Forward High School and they are doing great. And some of us went to Aladura Comprehensive High School. Amen. And they are doing great. Don't push the blame on others. Fix, face what you are going through. He never felt sorry for himself. He never blamed others. He took each situation as it came and made the best of it. He did not wait for his circumstance to change before serving God. He served God in the circumstance he found himself. Some of us, when we are going through some issues, that's when you are serious with God. The moment God answers you. I remember there was a brother in those days. When he was having issues like this, he would come to court, our church. I will pray, you pray, pray. The moment God answers his prayer, he will bail again. When trouble comes again. I've met many people like that. God will deliver them, prosper them, they forget God. He did not wait for circumstance to change. He served God in a circumstance. Even when the circumstance improved, he kept serving God. He did not grow weary in doing good. And in due course, double portion came. So if you too will not grow weary, your double portion will come in Jesus' name. Then he was humble to one double portion because God resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. And humility can be defined as meekness, lowliness, and absence of self. So humility is a heart attitude, not merely an outward demeanor. And you can see this in the life of Joseph, in the way he relates to his master, in the way he related to the captain of the guard. And look at even when, when he interpreted the dream. Look at even when they say, oh, yes, this is he, yes. Look at his testimony. He said, it is not in me. God shall give glory. I could give Pharaoh an answer of peace. He was an humble person. And it was his humility that enabled that made it possible for the Lord to entrust Joseph with tremendous responsibility without fear that it will corrupt him. No wonder Philippians 2, 3 to 5 says, you do not from rivalry or conceit but in humility and you count others more significant than yourself. You see this about him. It's not about him. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also the interest of others. Have this mind among yourself, which was also in Christ. And what was that mind? He humbled himself. First Peter 5 6 says we should clothe ourselves with humility. Wisdom. You need wisdom. You want to get the double portion? You need wisdom. 
wisdom. He was very wise. You take wisdom to interpret dream. You take wisdom to manage the affair of a whole nation. You need wisdom, which is the correct application of knowledge. He was gracious and forgiving. You want double portion? You must be gracious. You must have the heart of forgiveness. Genesis 42:25. When he revealed his, his, himself to his brothers, Genesis 45, look at the way he forgave them. Even in Genesis 15, 19 to 20, he still told them, he said, am I in the place of God? You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. You want the double portion, you must be forgiven. You find that in the life of Job too. Though the, how the friend that they, 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 they have stigmatized him, labeled him, yet he forgave them. You want double portion, you need to be forgiven. Maybe your husband has offended you, you need to forgive. He was godly. He was a man of faith. If you are not godly, if you are not a man of faith, you cannot receive the double portion. All those that received it, they were godly and they had faith in God. Joseph trusted his God and the God of his father through everything. He was not selective in his trust. He trusted him through everything. And the Lord was with him. That was a repeated word in his life. The Lord was with him. The Lord was with him. The Lord was with him. He was a man of faith. So, in closing, you want the double portion, then follow suit. Follow the pathway that Joseph treaded. Follow the pathway that Job treaded, treaded. Follow the pathway that Elijah treaded. It was not easy. It was a hard thing. But it was achievable. Lastly, they were focused. Looking unto Jesus Christ. They were not distracted. All the prison and all the rest, they were a means of distraction. All the Jordan, all the Jericho, that Elisha and the son of the prophet, they were all distraction. But they remained focused. Jesus Christ too was focused. He was looking at the goal set before him. And he allowed nothing to distract him. The double portion is achievable and attainable. But you need to focus on Christ. So are you here this morning? Where is your focus? Who are you focusing on? Are you focusing on yourself? The beginning of the journey to the double portion is a life in Christ. So if you are here today or you are watching online, you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, I want to beg you by the mercies of God. God has promised us double portion and is able to do it. So if you are here, you want to give your life to Christ, this opportunity to do so. And also if you are not, Lord, your life is not straight with him, then you need to change. One thing that was distinctive about all these people we mentioned was their righteous standing with God. You are living in sin. I want you to test and examine your ways and return unto the Lord. So if you are here this morning online, you want to give your life to Christ, or you want to dedicate your life to Christ, can you just wave your hand to God? Even as we pray this morning, is there anyone like that? Father in heaven, we thank you this morning. Almighty God, we bless your name. Jehovah, we give you praise. Thank you for the example you've given us in the man, Joseph. Lord, we pray, O oh God. And Lord, you will first of all help us, O oh God. Lord God, O oh God, to have this attitude. Too. Lord, grace, O oh God, to be diligent. Grace, O oh God, to be godly. Grace, O oh God, to be enduring, to persevere. Wisdom, O oh God, to navigate the issue of life. Grace to develop our capacity, O oh God, so that when this double blessing comes into our life, 
we will not waste it in the name of Jesus. As a church, Father, we pray you develop our capacity so that as we enter into this season, oh God, as we go in this season, oh God, we will not waste the double portion in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise Thank the Lord. for listening to the message. We hope you were blessed and are ready to run with the word. Our goal is to build you with the word of God so you can impact your world. This broadcast was made possible through the support of our partners. Please visit our website at www.theremachapel.ca to see our service offerings, join us in any of our live events, and to learn about how you can partner with us. Thank you and God bless.